Every, everything that's to do with accent is not an area, it's just a different way of speaking. With me today, a very special guest who has been teaching all over the world, who has who is an expert in pronunciation, he's an author as well, and a conference speaker. Next to me is Mark Hancock. Mark, welcome, thank you Hello. very much for being here. My pleasure. Great, it's great to have you here. It's a cold and windy day. I know, it is, it is. So Mark gave a great talk on phonology and how we can include that in the educational system. Now I thought, Mark, and that's going to be the first question, that many people might be worried about having an accent uh, that might be not similar to the native English accent. Uh, what would you say to these people? Um, don't worry about that because the majority of speakers of English in the world have an accent which is not uh, native speaker as, you, as, as it's called. Uh, that's the vast majority of people. So uh, obviously it's not a problem. The problem with um, an accent, say a Spanish accent, is is those parts of it which are not um, globally intelligible. So right. the parts of it which are intelligible don't need to be changed. If it isn't broken, you don't have to fix it. Right. I like the idea that you say that it is not necessarily a problem if people actually have their own accent, because at the same time it forms part of their personality as well. But then again, how I've been told, and I think how many people have been told as well, is by just teachers correcting us on specific words and saying, no, it's not pronounced like that, it is pronounced like this. That, um, that's an interesting way of putting it, this, it's not pronounced, that's a passive. Um, and uh, the passive conceals the, the, the actor, the, the subject of the verb, right? Yeah. It's not pronounced by who? Um, the assumption being that there are some kind of a referee group, a cloud of people judging your accent. And these, this kind of people, uh, something like maybe the Queen or an RP speaker, some idealised uh, referee, that person doesn't exist. Or if they do, they're not relevant. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. True. I agree, I agree. Be careful for the weasel passive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree, I agree. <laughs> But what I also found very interesting about your talk yesterday is the fact that you mentioned the difference when actually teaching between focusing on a product hmm. and focusing on the process. Could you further elaborate on that, yes. referring to the pronunciation? It's like you were just saying that uh, you've had this experience of being uh, taught it is not pronounced like this. That, that's a t an example of focusing on the product. You are saying you're, you're imagine the teacher is supposing that they're teaching an accent, right. um, whereas what I think they should be teaching is uh, a skill, yeah. um, a capacity to uh, modify the way you speak according to the person you're speaking to. Um, that's called accommodation. That uh, is that's a process. You're learning to get better at that process. Yes. Not you're not trying to emulate the accent of some uh, idealized referee you're trying to get better at adapting to the person you're speaking to great. in English. Great, mm. I like that. No, and I like that idea as well because we're creating basically when we're learning a language we're trying to express ourselves in our own unique way. You want to be the person who you already are but in the other language as well and this way we can like try to learn this skill along the way not as a process of, or not as a, as a way of just saying everything correctly as one person, as the teacher may say, yes. but try to find your own way. There is no correct, is there? In pronunciation, there's no such thing as correct. Love that. Um, so, it's not like grammar. Uh, even there, you might argue there's no such thing as correct, but in pronunciation, there isn't. There literally isn't. The only kind of error that I, I would call an error is a spelling-induced mispronunciation. Right. When, when when the student doesn't under, doesn't realise what the spelling, how to read from the spelling to pronouncing, that might be an error. Right. For example, if they say pear for the fruit, pear, that's a spelling-induced error. Right. That's the only kind of error. Every, everything that's to do with accent is not an error. It's just a different way of speaking. Mm -hmm.